Restart, restart. So you guys loved the last iPad video, but you wanted to learn about this style in a deeper process. Well, in today's video, we'll be designing this from ground up, the full process, so you guys can get started with your clothing brands. The only outside downloads we'll be using are from Texture Labs, and they're just gonna be textures. All other brushes will be native and free with the program. Now let's go ahead and lock in. Setting up your page is important for print. For this project, we'll be working in pixels set to 3000 by 3000 pixels at a DPI of no less than 250. To make this process easier, turn on the page assist and drawing guides, same as the last video to ensure that you have symmetry. Make sure you follow the steps on the screen here so you can have a smooth process when it comes to this because I hate setting up symmetry when it comes to Procreate. Everybody knows this. The brush we'll be using for this whole drawing process is going to be Mercury, my favorite brush, which is at the top of the inking section in the Procreate brush section. Once your setup is ready, the main objective now is to draw the top of the head. As we're using the drawing guide, we just need to ensure the head is going to be not too wide. And by drawing the top of the head first, we give ourselves a box slash restriction to ensure our design looks, I guess, normal. Once you have the top of your head complete, stylize the ears, then follow with drawing the rest of the face. And I've got to mention the chin is going to be the hardest part. This took like several tries. Obviously, if you want your design to be more cartoony, you can go ahead and exaggerate features. Once you have your template of your face, you can start adding in details. In my design, I have the hat, so I'm drawing the side of the hair. You can draw hair as it might be easier. It might help to turn off the drawing assist if you're adding in things other than the beanie that I'm having. I'm doing a simple beanie, so it works for the symmetry tool, but if you're doing hair and custom hair, turn off the symmetry tool so you can have a bit more flexibility. You're probably thinking, why is he drawing directly over the line work? Well, we're gonna be using erasers anyway, and I'm trying to make this beanie look nice. So that's my main focus, and then I can remove the top of the head or any overlapping lines that I don't need with the eraser. Now, when it comes to face details, this is where you shine. Adding in a crazy nose, eyes, and mouth. For the sake of this video, I'll keep my details clean. For myself, I decided to add in a bandage to nose to add a bit of character towards my design, as well as stars in the pupils to make the design pop a bit more. For a more unique style of art that looks a lot less digital, again, go ahead and turn off the drawing assist and maybe draw in a custom nose or a custom mouth so your design looks a bit more unique. Now, essentially, once you go over these steps, if you missed anything, go ahead and add or adjust the details. Your line work should be complete. Again, please don't try to keep up with the videos. In real time, this took around 30 minutes. So if you're following along, make sure to pause at certain sections so you're comfortable moving forward. For the back of the head, start by duplicating the finish line work of the front of the face, then use an eraser to remove all the face details. Ensure the symmetry is back on, so we'll be drawing some more hair at the back of the head so it looks like the back of a head. If you don't know what the back of a head looks like, check some references. I added in some haircut dots just for extra detail so people can make sure 100% this is the back of a head. Now, one thing I did miss, which I would recommend you guys check when you're looking at references, is the details in the ears. Obviously, if somebody's turned their back, you can't see detail in their ear. Once your line work is complete for both the front and the back, we're gonna go ahead and start prepping our design for color. Firstly, duplicate the layer you're about to color. Make sure you have a duplicate of the front and the back and go ahead and group those and keep them in a file called OG file, whatever you wanna call it. Just ensure that these duplicates do not get touched from now on. Make, the, make sure they're at the bottom and you leave them alone in case you wanna come back and make any edits later. Now go ahead and duplicate the back or the front, whichever you wanna start with, and make sure you have a layer below that, which should be the exact same as the layer above that. That layer below is gonna be the layer we're coloring in. So that's gonna be the color layer. Use that layer below and start filling in color. Do not add color to the main layer that's at the top because if you do that, you're messed up and you're gonna have to grab the layers that we duplicated at the beginning. That's why we, to add any further details like shading and stuff like that, of the color layer, you're gonna wanna add another layer on top of that. And there should be three layers basically. Your top line layer, your shading layer, 
and then your color layer, which you just completed. In the middle, you're gonna go ahead and set that layer to 44% opacity, and then go in with an airbrush and add in any further details, or you can go ahead and add as much layers in between that as you want if you wanna add crazy details here and there to make your design stand out a bit more. Obviously, I'm just saying that you separate those two layers because you want your line work to never be touched. You don't wanna disturb your line work unless you wanna add highlights on, to on top of that. If you head over to Texture Lab directly on your iPad, you can go ahead and download any sort of textures that you want. For myself personally, I'm gonna go ahead and download this grunge halftone one, and then I'm gonna download this brick one so it could be more related to those Instagram sort of designs. Inserting your file or texture is very easy. All you have to do is go up to the spanner or that little tool icon there and then go to add. And then from add, you wanna press insert file, not insert photo. Obviously, cause it got downloaded into our files. From there, locate your download section on your iPad. And then you can go ahead and just locate your texture and drag it into Procreate. Once it's imported, size it how you want it, and then play with the opacity slash blending modes to get the perfect look. Now, I like to switch between overlay and hard light. So basically overlay just does what it does. It overlays the image, but it retains the blacks and stuff like that. Hard light more so burns the actual texture into the design. So you lose some of the blacks because it burns it into the blacks as well. But again, just go with whatever looks best for you because textures just come down to how they look visually. Ensure all your layers or textures are clipped onto your actual design once it's flattened. Obviously we had a bunch of those layers, like we had the line, color, and the shading layers. So once you grab a duplicate of that and you have a duplicate of your group, make sure you flatten that and then add the textures on top and make clipping masks. Once you're complete, your layers slash files should look like this and you're ready to start making mock-ups. For the mock-ups, I'll be using the sketchbook ones, the draft ones that I put out on my Studio Wheel Patreon, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a little quick process. It's the same as the last video. All you have to do is go ahead and copy the layer that you want to paste within your new artboard. Make sure you don't add any designs into the actual sketchbook file. Just add them to a new artboard, paste them in, and then start implementing your design. The painting process is exactly the same as painting the heads. All you have to do is make a duplicate of the layer you're about to paint because that's the layer you're gonna be filling in. So once you fill in that layer, you can go ahead and add in another layer where you can add in your design or anything like textures. For example, I'll be adding in a new layer and adding in a wash sort of effect. All that's done, how that's done is basically grabbing an airbrush, making it as large as possible and getting a similar color of a lighter shade of that similar color that you have already. And then just brushing it onto the t-shirt on that layer that's blank. So that's what you're doing. It's the exact same as adding shading and details to the faces. All that's left is to go ahead and copy your designs from the art file that you make your designs in. Again, grab everything, flatten it, and then copy and paste that into the mock-up file. Make sure you have a duplicate of this. As you can see underneath, I have duplicates in case I wanna go back and make adjustments later. Go ahead and repeat the same exact steps as you did for the back to the front, and you should have your mock-ups fully complete. Now, essentially, all you have to do is make your, I guess, mock-up file look pretty. If you wanna do that, maybe you wanna post on Instagram for sale, or maybe you wanna send it to a manufacturer. Necessarily, I've never made technicals using Procreate, so I can't guarantee that making a technical this way is safe, especially because most of the designs are very stylized when it comes to the technicals. But I do wanna make a video of making a technical with Procreate. If you guys would love to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and make that video for you. But let's go ahead and review the design. So I think this design turned out pretty sick. Everything about this hits, it's perfect for summer. The colors are just perfect. I think that burnt orange slash red garment and mixed with the blue slash light, I guess, blueberry sort of design when it comes to the human alien thing that I created works really well. Especially with the little hints of, you know, 
yellow pinks and oranges on the pins and badges that i added to the beanie and you guys can clearly see that i took reference from this garment of my face i literally saw my face in the camera and i said oh i could probably make a design similar to this and i'm wearing the beanie already so i just made an alter ego of me i hope you guys enjoy the process of this video and i hope you created something awesome based on what i've taught you today i'll see you guys in the next one i love you peace